that they call this the end of the world down here. And they figure that nobody don't come down here to worry about this spot. This, this used to be Nork housing, you know? And now it's, now it's people are kind of, it's banded, people are coming right, in, yeah, doing right. drugs. That's what they call, that's why we call them bandominiums. Like, you know, instead of condominiums, these are bandominiums because people live all in them. But I don't really walk this, the city of Nork that much because you can get robbed in the day, the night, afternoon, anytime. So you just have to always be on alert. We can't be comfortable no more. Be too scared to even go to sleep because somebody going to wind up breaking the house. I was raised here from kindergarten to 12th grade. So. And what are some of the problems the community is facing that maybe the rest of the country is not aware of? Uh, I'd say drugs is a huge problem. Education, um, families, uh, don't, they, they don't have uh, good family units. Um, oh my gosh, there are just so many, I guess. I'm going to keep it real with you. Um, since I've been living around here, and I'm 53, I've never seen so much death. Homicides. A lot of them. It's a lot of homicides that go on. Man, this note, by the way, it's a lot of homicides that go on up here. That's all. Like two months ago, around two months ago, seven people died in like four days up here. Like in this section alone, though. It's the Vellsburg section. It's the Vellsburg section. Man. I know it's nothing really back here. Whoever, if you see anybody back here, you might see somebody like they sleep in the hallways there. They sit up in, in the doorway shooting. You see a lot of uh, uh, sex acts back here. Oh, man, you'd be surprised, man. I mean, you wouldn't even think that it's nothing. Just like when you rolled past, you would figure it was abandoned. Yeah, yeah. This is a mini city back here, man. What, what can the city do? Like, do you think, what, what's, what are the problems? What can the city do to fix this? <laughs> to flatten it. What's your message to anyone um, to anyone who doesn't really know what's going on in Newark? Um, what, what's kind of your here. message? What don't is it? I'm here to try to have a good life. Don't come here to try to make a family. Well, none of it's not going to work. New York's obviously had issues for a long time. How many years has it just been completely destitute like this? Like this? I'm going to say I'm going I'm going to say ten that I can, you know, it might even be a little longer. Wow. Yeah. Man, this is crazy, man. This, you can see how the trees, how Mother Nature is taking back over this land. You know what I mean? Because at one time you could walk, it was a sidewalk here. You know what I mean? You can look at it now. Look at it. Look at the trees. Growing up, I mean, you, you're taking the bus to school. You're stepping on crack vials and seeing dime bags and, like, alcohol. And there are, um, you know, drug addicts who are, like, doing that famous lean and nod. And these are the things that you're greeted with going to school. I mean, when we came here and scoped out the area the other day, we found out that, you know, not only is there glass and needles and different things here, but there's also kids that still come play here at 4 or 5 o'clock at night every day. And that's just, it's unacceptable. It's lead in the water. It's been there for quite some time. And they just now starting to put it together because kids have gotten sick from the lead water. And some of the parents be taking them to the hospital when they find out that they got lead. It's not a pretty sight. There's a lot of lead in the water, and part of the reason is because the solution that they came up with 20, 30, 40 years ago is starting to actually wear off within the pipe, so the lead is actually now getting into the water. So there's a big campaign push right now to make uh, residents aware and ha let the city actually repair those pipes and replace those pipes so there is no lead. The mayor of Newark wants to make Newark, or make Newark, the city of Newark, uh, what do they call it, sanctuary community. We have, we can afford that. And this community, like every other community across America, should be mindful of the immigration laws. And the situation in Newark has been bad for a while, and it's almost even gotten worse, some would say. Why do you think that is, and what can the people do to kind of fight back against it? A lot of it, honestly, a lot of it has to do with the representation. When they get in the office, they don't do much. They talk a good talk, but when they get there, they forget all about what they said they was going to do. We are the people that who vote the mayors in. And we be telling them we need help to get the crime rate down. Because too many innocent kids and adults been getting killed for no reason. To be honest with you, if any, if you go into any suburban neighborhood in this country and you had a fourth of what you see here, there would be an uproar and people would be fired from their positions immediately and they'd make sure the city got fixed. Talk to people like me, you know, get my opinion. You know, other people, you know, don't just do things to put on a show or to get elected because this is serious. This is life. You know, it has been in the past year, you know how many overdoses it has been in this area right here? The, the sad thing is that sometimes you want help, 
but you don't know how to get help or you don't know where to go, you know, and like that's why, like, right now, I feel completely stuck. They are not putting their citizens first. They are putting people who shouldn't even be here first. And when they take took that oath of office, it was supposed to be to see for, about the general welfare of American citizens first. And they're neglecting to do that, particularly the Democratic Party. Are you a fan of Cory Booker at all, or do you think he could be doing more for the community? No, no, no. That's a definite no. Cory Booker's not for the people. Cory Booker is nothing. I wouldn't even vote for him to become president or anything else. What are your thoughts on Cory Booker? Well, I remember when he was the mayor of Newark. He did nothing. They had an anti-violence um, rally on the steps of City Hall. He didn't send, he didn't send a representative. Neither was he present. I was there. And I was shocked when he won the senatorial seat because as mayor, he failed the city. What about the poor people? The ones that have worked, busted their butt for their families to have something. He don't care nothing about that. And if he don't care nothing about that, I don't care nothing about him. What, what's your message directly to the elected leaders of Newark, if you could tell them one thing? I, I would tell them to stop focusing on hating Trump and look at the people who put you into office. Remember the responsibilities you have to your constituents. What's your message to Cory Booker directly, if you could tell him one thing? Change your attitude and stop being a negative person. Be a positive person. Because we don't need that here. Urban America is, you know, been neglected by many of the elected officials. So I'm glad to be a part of this project that comes into the inner city, does something positive, so that maybe the residents will understand that their quality of life can be improved. Well, what brings you out here today uh, to volunteer? I ain't, I was walking through my hood and I saw them, I, why not help? We, we the ones that do this to it, that's all. We got just a little bit complacent, um, whether they're just throwing out little incentives to keep people complacent and people haven't been rising up like they should. And now is the time for us to do that. And I know people don't like to hear this, but I've always been a firm believer that with somebody like Donald Trump in the White House, you actually have the opportunity to do that. Because this guy is a pragmatist, man. He doesn't care. Rise up. Let's take these cities back. Let's get them clean. And let's do what we deserve to have happen, to be honest with you. Like my whole slogan for today is let's talk more action. And that's what it's about. You know, if you want to be negative, you can be negative. We don't have time for that. We're out here trying to clean up. Uh, tell me what brings you here today, Roger. Uh, Scott Pressler. Scott Pressler was an inspiration. When I saw what he did in Baltimore and I seen how the people reacted, because it's one thing for him to go out there and just do it. And the media, the way they put it out there, they don't really show you that the people there actually appreciated what he did. So much so that they invited him back for September 9th, I believe, to come back and do it again. And he's actually working with uh, Reverend Shannon right out there that's actually running for the Republican mayor of Baltimore right now. So we're hitting this on multi-prone prone approaches, man. We're going to take over the city in the, Mar the Mario ship. And we're going to keep cleaning up cities. And he was really just an inspiration and a lightning rod. And I grew up in this city right here. I also went to school out here and grew up going to church out here all my life. So it was the perfect location to come and do it. I am a firm believer that if you feel better, you will you do better. And like when you look around your community, if there's garbage everywhere, you just don't feel good. So I'm hoping that like today, everybody will see people from different communities coming together, cleaning up and then feel empowered and motivated and then just feel better. My mind said whatever we could do to help each other out, that's what I'm on. I ain't really with the violence no more. Nothing like that. Like, I'm trying to help the community. Today, well, you met some people here. Good yeah, group? Yeah, good. it's cool people. It's, I mean, they trying to do better for the community. Some of them grew up around here. They trying to do better for the community. You got to respect it. It's dangerous when you only allow one side of, like, discourse. Like, you know, people are, um, are not... Toler like tolerating other people's opinions and views, which is very dangerous because it leads to groupthink and then eventually to tyranny. The media is on a race war. They want us to hate each other. We do not hate each other. Look at this. We're all here. We love each other and we know it, you know? Trump is bringing people together. That's what we want. Bring us together. Trump's not that bad. So a lot of times you have to take what he's saying in context and understand his personality, understand where he comes from and why he says things the way he does. And if we can start to do that, maybe we can start to kind of bring a little bit of understanding to the situation. And nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody here is perfect. But at the end of the day, when you just look at what this guy's doing, whether it's the first step back, 
whether it's opportunity zones right now and just having a chance to start taking our communities back and have more investment pour into them, then letting out two, 3,000 people out of jail for minor offenses. The way that we're going in this country right now is the way we need to go, and it's really emboldening a lot of people like myself, like the Scott Presslers, like like-minded people like us to really just step up and just do it. Don't talk about it. Just do it. I mean, if you select a certain thing on social media, that's what they're going to give you more of. You'll have more of the same news, more of the same discourse. You're not learning anything. You're not really growing. And so I think that we're become, the, the country is so divided because we're so stagnant. We're, nobody's learning from each other, tolerating things. Like when we talk about tolerating things, like we're doing a very poor job of that. You know, you can't just shut down a whole side of a conversation. What are your thoughts on Donald Trump as president? I think he's doing a wonderful job. In the two and a half years that he's been in our White House, he's put America and Americans first. He's doing the best he can. And even with this China, uh, what do you call it, trade war, he is the master of the art of the deal. I say hold fast, hold steady, keep supporting our president because he will keep America great. Nobody's not going to vote for Cory Booker. I could tell you that right now. But then I had experience with the man, and the man is no good.